Hi, my name is Kathleen Chalfand, and I'd like to tell you about a book I just read. My friend Stephanie has written a wonderful memoir called Other Girls Like Me. It's about a time when she lived with a bunch of other activist women outside a United States military base in England in the 1980s protesting against nuclear war. But it's about so much more than that. This book made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me marvel, it made me love, it made me hope. And I suspect it'll do the same for you. So I'd like to give you just a little taste by reading you the first few paragraphs. Chapter 1. Free Nelson Mandela, The Specials. A childhood in St. Mary Bourne, an English village of thatched roof cottages winding along the banks of the Bourne River with its swaying water weeds, frog spawn, and fluttering ducks, was a childhood filled with wonders. I waded through fresh waters as the river rose anew from its barren bed each spring, swung across the river on tires attached to ropes on summer nights, warmed my hands at autumn bonfires on golden evenings, and rolled in deep snowbanks in the winter. My family of six lived at the edge of the village behind the Flint schoolhouse adjacent to the primary school that my three siblings and I attended. There were 11 pupils in my year with funny last names like Bone and Strange and Gibbons. We arrived in this peculiar land from the industrial north when I was six. My sister Kate was nine, my brother Robert four, with baby Sarah arriving not long after we did, bundled out of the ambulance one November afternoon and bustled into the bright kitchen for us to peer at in curiosity. People thought our northern accent strange, but we soon lost them and became posh instead, never catching the lilting Hampshire accent that was so different from any I had ever heard. Everything was different here. No lorries or buses rumbled past our front door, but instead there were fields and birds and horses wherever I looked, accompanied by the soothing sound of wood pigeons hidden in trees. I lost myself in books and played classical guitar in the privacy of my attic bedroom, its slanted skylight revealing the stars, moon, and clouds in the changing sky. One evening at dusk, I watched spellbound from my bedroom window as two steaming bulls locked horns on the hill behind our house, the air visible from their flaring nostrils as they snorted and pounded the ground, dust flying. My father had landed a new job in what seemed like paradise. But just 15 miles away, a stretch of ancient common land with jumping deer, bounding rabbits, and soaring kestrels had been turned into an Air Force base that was soon to house the deadliest weapons ever held on our green and pleasant land, American cruise missiles poised to strike against the Soviet Union. The first tiny signs came to us like the first buds of flowers in spring. First one American military family, then another, rented out cottages in the village. First one news piece, then another, announced the mounting support of our Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher for the United States President Ronald Reagan's build up to war. St. Mary Bourne may have seemed like an unlikely breeding ground for an activist, but by the time the cruise missiles arrived, I was ready for them. So, now, you'll have to buy the book so you can find out what Stephanie and her pals got up to.